five. Namaste India. Good morning to everyone. I'm Supriya Pangada, President of Indian Student Association, currently known as, also known as ISA. It's great pleasure to welcome you all for this hangout session on behalf of Indian community at ASU. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you all for making decision to join ASU and to be Sun Devil. We shall do our best to help you all to settle at Tempe, Arizona and get your journey started at ASU. In today's hangout session, we'll be mainly addressing about pickup and accommodation and, and also we'll take queries related to travel, life at ASU and post-arrival things that you have to do after coming to ASU. Let me introduce my team here. Shiva Balasubramanyam. Hi, everyone. Vikas Patel. Hello, guys. Nishan Krishnappa. Hi, people. Vaishnavi Govindarajan. Hi, guys. Saurabh Majumdar. Hi, guys. Cheta Sharma. Namaste, India. Anish Shastri. And our Vice President Vishwajit. Now, I'll pass over to Vishwajit to talk more about pickup and accommodation. Vishwajit, please take over. Thank you so much, uh, Supriya, for the introduction. Uh, so uh, let's begin uh, today's Hangout session by uh, establishing some ground rules. Uh, so there's a link provided below. So please fill out the Google form, and there you can start posting questions. OK? Awesome. Um, so I'll quickly take you through the guidelines for and, uh, and the procedure for pickups and temporary accommodation. So let's start with pickups. Uh, so this is how you register for pickups, okay? So for those of you who haven't registered already, this is how you do it. Uh, step one, go to the ISA Facebook page, in case you haven't uh, registered, you haven't uh, you know, liked the page yet, or visit the ISA website, or go to the ASU website and look up for Fall International Arrival Form, okay? So you must use your ASU ID for registration. Please keep that in mind while registering. Uh, other IDs like Gmail, Yahoo won't work. So you must register with your ASU ID. Um, so this time around, we are collaborate, collaborating with ISC, um, which, is, uh, which is the acronym for Inter International Students Engagement uh, for Pickups. So um, you can also register for temporary accommodation in the same form. Um, yeah, so this is an important point. If you don't want pickups but only temporary accommodation, please go through the same procedure and fill out the form and then send us an email saying you need only temporary accommodation and not pickups. Uh, I hope um, I clarified that doubt. Um, so one sincere request, please register quickly uh, so that that gives us enough time you know, to assign volunteers and um, um, everything else. So um, after you register, you'll receive an automated reply, an email from ISC. Okay? So this email uh, would confirm your registration and it would also contain details regarding Super Shuttle. So Super Shuttle is a shuttle service at the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Uh, you can find um, the info on Super Shuttle um, on, on its portal, uh, the Super Shuttle website. So in case you don't receive any email, please don't panic. Uh, but it is advisable to check your spam. There's every possibility that it could go to your spam. So please check your spam. And um, even then, if you don't get your emails, uh, wait for a couple of days, and then um, you know I advise you to register with the same, providing the same details, again. So uh, regarding the volunteer pickup, yes. So there will be a volunteer from the Indian Student Association. There will be who um, will be assigned to you, and he he or she will coordinate with you at the earliest, and uh, you can coordinate with him, and he'll be there to pick you up. So please be patient uh, as the volunteers are all students and uh, they would be busy with work. So once you arrive, um, so there will be a volunteer at the airport wearing an ASU t-shirt. So this is how you could uh, identify the volunteer. I don't think you should have any problem with that. Um, so yeah, so it is highly advisable uh, to keep your volunteers and an ISA member's contact details. And the member's details um, are provided on the ISA website. So contact us in case of an emergency. Of course, the volunteer's details will be provided by the volunteer uh, himself. Um, and sincere request, please be courteous to the volunteers. 
Um, so further details, um, uh, you know, you can you know, for, for more details, you can go to the website and please go through the guidelines and all the instructions given there. So yeah, that's about the pickups. Um, so let me in, uh, you know uh, you know give you a quick um, you know, intro on the temporary accommodation and how it works. Um, so temporary accommodation is a voluntary service by the Indian Student Association. So you will be accommodated in one of the houses uh, in the vicinity of the campus. So you could be accommodated with seniors um, or our uh, temporary accommodation providers, new students, etc. Uh, this time around, we are grateful to Tempe Terrace. Uh, it's an apartment on Orange Street. Uh, they have, um, you know, agreed to provide a temporary accommodation. So you could be, uh, you know, um, um, you could be, you could be staying there as well. Oh yeah. Uh, so please be courteous to them and keep it clean. Uh, yeah, we have been getting a lot of emails regarding the maximum number of stay and everything. So, uh, temporary accommodation will be provided for a maximum of three days. Uh, the reason being, we have to accommodate around 600 to 700 people, and we have limited apartments. Uh, I hope you understand. Um, and yeah, we cannot guarantee any roommate of your choice or an area of your choice. Uh, it is completely based on the situation and the availability of the apartment. Uh, again, so more details are on the website and the Facebook page. Uh, in case you have missed out on anything, please uh, let us know. Uh, shoot us an email. Uh, we'll answer it at the earliest. All right. Um, so that um, so um, so before uh, I hand over the mic to Shiva, uh, let me quickly uh, tell you again how to join this Hangout session. Um, so you you have to register um, by signing up the form. So once you sign up, there'll be a Google form sent to your email. So please click on the Google form, fill out the questions, and we'll get the questions here, and we'll start answering them soon. Okay. So to give you more insight into uh, you know what you have to do after coming here, uh, please uh, Shiva, please take over. Thank you, Vishwa. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Shiva, and uh, I'll be walking you through some of the mandatory things and the other procedures that you need to follow once you're here. Uh, so let's assume that uh, you have landed at the Phoenix airport and ISA has picked you up and put you up in a nice accommodation and you, you had a good night's sleep. So the following morning, which would be technically your first day in uh, Tempe, there are a few things you need to do and I'll be, uh, I'll be explaining them to you right now. So the first and the foremost thing and the mandatory thing that you need to do is uh, you need to carry your passport you need to carry your ASA issued I-20 and there's this another document that you might be issued in the, uh, which, which you are issued known as the I-94 in some cases it would be the hard copy in most cases it is the soft copy in case you've been issued a hard copy you should carry that along and uh, you need to go to the International Student Services Office which is located at the Student Services uh, building and uh, you need to go there for your service check-in now the service check-in is a federal requirement and it's a mandatory requirement and if you fail to do so it can affect your uh, immigration status and in the consequences can be as worse to, uh, as worse as a uh, deportation so you don't want to miss on this one and you 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 have to do, get this done within the first 24 hours of uh, arriving at Tempe uh, secondly once you're done with this you can head straight to the memorial union building and uh, it's also known as the MU and uh, you you should check uh, you should check out the student card services and this is where you'll get your uh, ASU ID which is also known as the ASU Sun card or the ASU Pitchfork card and uh, you might want to carry uh, money with you because this service costs costs you around I think twenty four twenty five dollars so you might want to carry cash with you and uh, yeah, regarding the Sun card, the Sun card is a, uh, it's like your uh, single uh, one-stop access to everything uh, academic as well as non-academic services that are uh, offered by ASU. So you, you have to get this done as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, I have mentioned quite a lot of places like the Student Services Building, the ISSO. Don't worry about it. Once you're here, we can guide you as to how to get there. So that shouldn't be the least of your that should be the least of your concerns. So the, the third thing that I would like to say, uh, like I would like to mention a few optional things. Once you're, so once you're done with these two things, you can go ahead and visit the banks that are present in the visit, vicinity of the campus and you might want to check out the offering or the product offerings, what kind of accounts they offer and all and decide for yourself. Uh, secondly, you, you can even visit 
the mobile service providers that are present around the campus and uh, you can configure your connection mobile connection and uh, in case uh, uh, if you do if you don't have an apartment as of now and you are living in a temporary accommodation uh, given by isa you can uh, roam roam around and uh, try visiting the leasing offices of the various properties and uh, try to zero in on your apartment and for people who are done with all of this and have nothing else to do i would say uh, Roam, roam the campus. Get accustomed to the place, the climate, and a few things you can do right away is uh, hike to the A Mountain or the Tempe Lake. Both of these places are accessible by foot. And for other people who have access to some kind of uh, travel, some kind of ride, uh, I would like to say Arizona is a home to a lot of beautiful canyons, and most well known being the Grand Canyon. So you might want to check that out as well. I think that's pretty much uh, everything I have for you right now uh, regarding the post arrival procedures. Uh, I I would like to redirect back to Vishwa. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Uh, thank you, Shiva. Okay, so before we start taking the first question, um, so let me uh, just tell you how to join this Hangout session for people who just joined in. So there's a please follow the events page on Google Plus. So there'll be a Google form. So please fill out the Google form and you can post questions there and the questions will come up on the screen and we'll take the questions one by one and start answering them. All right, so we have the first question here. Um, it's from Nagesh. The question is, which is the best place to stay in terms of uh, rent, shuttle access, and is it okay to stay a bit far but should not be compromising the academics? Okay, so this question, I think, um, Nishant, would you like to answer the question? Yep, sure, Nishant. Uh, uh, what I would want to bring everything to notice is uh, there are two sections of uh, in and around the university there are two sections where uh, predominantly the Indian students stay one is the east side of the campus and the west side of the campus right now the, uh, the higher, there is a higher percent of Indian students staying at the east side in terms of rent uh, in the east side in and around uh, streets like University Drive, Lemon Street and Rural Road the rent is pretty much the same for uh, for uh, for uh, comparable configurations of the apartment. And uh, in terms of shuttle access, uh, I would say uh, Tempe has something called as Orbit Bus Service, which is uh, pretty much uniformly uh, spread around in and around Tempe. Since most of us are uh, uh, since many of students stay at the east side of the campus, we are quite acquainted with the routes in and around University Drive and Lemon Street. And also, and in terms of west side, it is quite closer to the computer and engineering department. And uh, it might be, uh, in terms of rent, it might be a little lesser compared to the ones on the east, east, uh, east side of the campus. And also in the next part of the question where it says, is it OK to stay a bit far from the campus? I would uh, suggest little far from the campus, I would uh, I would suggest you to have a good uh, means of transportation, uh, have an uh, have a bike or uh, stay in apartment place apartments where uh, which are closer to the closer to orbit bus stops, or if you have any mode of tra transformation transportation of yourself, that is also great. So that uh, is more of a personal choice, I would say, but as a as a personal suggestion, I would give in your first semester try to stick close to the campus. Try to stick close close to the campus, and also to bring it to your notice, uh, ISA as an organization does not endorse any apartment community, but we do have uh, a list of communities in and around the campus which you could uh, look it up and uh, decide for yourselves. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Nishan. Thank you for the info. So the second question we have, it's from uh, Shashank. So he asks, is the time of landing at Phoenix a constraint for the pickup? I'll be landing um, at, at about 10 PM in Phoenix. Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Shashank. Thank you. So um, ISA uh, does provide pickups, yes. And uh, um, time should not be a constraint. However, the Super Shuttle is a 24-hour service. So there would be a volunteer. You know, with a car, um, you know, most most likely, not uh, doing you know to help you with everything. So there will be a volunteer to a volunteer to pick you up. Time should not be a concern. You should be good there. 
All right. However, you won't be able to uh, sign the lease the same day because most offices close by 5.30. So that's probably one thing you should keep in mind. Anyway, so let's take the next question. So the next question is, um, I filled up the pickup and temporary accommodation form on the ASU website. Uh, the guidelines mentioned that I would receive an email after a submission which would uh, have instructions to get the pickup. Uh, I have not yet received any confirmation mail. I know at least one more person with the same issue. Um, Kunal, um, I'm extremely sorry, but uh, yes, I mean, please check your spam once, as I explained in the procedure. Um, you know, it, there's every chance that it could have gone to your spam. Uh, if not, please re-register, providing the same details that you had provided earlier. Okay, that should work. If nothing works out, I mean, if that fails again, please let us know, shoot us an email. Um, we'll see if anything can be done. Okay, cool. Um, OK, so the next question is, um, so how do we apply for research assistantships? Should we be applying only after coming there, or we can, uh, or can we apply uh, um, anything from India? Uh, OK, um, the question, question is from Nagesh. Uh, best answer would be, I think the RA applications vary from a department to department. So you need an advisor first. So um, what I would recommend is um, try talking to your professors, shoot them an email. Um, and um, I think that's one of the uh, reasonable uh, things to do. And some, however, some RAs um, are application based. So look in the Sun Devil jobs online, and you could, uh, you know, find information there. Okay. Cool. Um, so next, uh, next take the next question. Um, okay. So where is the Indian Society located in Tempe, so that I will search for off-campus accommodation at those locations only? This question is asked by Chandan. Uh, well, um, <laughs> Tempe is a huge place. Uh, the best answer would be, I, um, you know, I would say Indian society is well spread out um, in, in and around Tempe. So talk to your seniors. You know, <laughs> I think um, make a decision by you know uh, uh, talking to your seniors, and I think that would be the best answer. Um, okay. All right. So th the next question: uh, Is it better to get utensils from India? Or they are they available at comparable prices at Phoenix? Shashank uh, has asked this question. Um, I would like to redirect this question to Vaishnavi. Uh, Vaishnavi, please go ahead and answer this question. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, usually people have these questions, and um, it's normal to have such doubts. So um, I'd advise you to avoid the wait and come over here and get utensils out at Walmart or Target. Prices are very comparable, and also um, out here at Tempe, most of the apartments have electric stoves. So um, if you are, if you do want to get uh, utensils from back from back in India, then I suggest you get flat bottom utensils so that you can place them on the stove conveniently. If you're getting round bottom or curved bottom, that won't work. So uh, yeah, so you can come over here and buy. To, if you just want to avoid the wait. Then again, it's up to you if you want to get uh, utensils back from India. Another thing is um, out here at Tempe, we usually have hard water from the taps. So in case you want to, uh, uh, the thing is, uh, utensils from India are manufactured differently. So out here, the ones that are manufactured here are more prone to that kind of water. They've tested it and treated it. So you can go both ways. It's totally up to you to bring utensils from where you want. That's about it. Back to you, Vishwajit. Uh, Vishwa, I would just like to add something. Sure, Shiva, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, like Vaishnavi said, it's a good idea to compare the prices. And I think a smart thing to do would be uh, like Walmart and Amazon and all these uh, uh, entry, uh, com companies have an online portal as well. So you might want to check the prices there before you decide on what utensils to bring and what to buy here. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let's take the next question. So the next question is from Harsh Kumar. He asks, uh, I will reach Phoenix by 9 PM. So will there be any problem for ISA to manage the pickup? And what is the procedure for temporary accommodation? Uh, this question has already been answered. Um, uh, Harsh Kumar, if you are watching this video, there's a live stream. Uh, we, would have, we have already addressed this issue. So uh, I think you will have it clarified soon. OK, so the next question. Um, how much hard cash to carry while traveling from India to US? Mm, okay, Vikas, would you like to go ahead and answer that question, please? 
Yeah, we sure, sure. Uh, I would suggest uh, with my personal experience that uh, you should bring a cash of at least uh, $500 with you. Uh, and they should be in various denominations, particularly lower denominations. Uh, I would say like $5, $20 bills. And also, if you can get quarters, uh, that will be very helpful uh, for you to just uh, call uh, from the pay phones in the airport. Uh, also, this initial cash, uh, you will be, uh, with this initial cash, you will be able to pay uh, rent uh, gross, uh, and groceries and some provisions. Uh, moreover, you can bring extra cash if you want uh, in, in the form of Forex card and Traveler's card, Traveler's checks, I would say. Uh, you can encash them at the banks and the nearest ATMs. Um, I think uh, that's uh, the answer for it. Thanks, Vishwa. You can take over. Awesome. Thank you, Vikas, for clarifying that. So let's move on to the next question quickly. Um, the question is, is one hour 40 minutes enough for a flight layover? This is one of the uh, most asked questions. Uh, I think Saurabh would be the best person to answer this. I think uh, even he had uh, you know, a layover of one and a half hours around that time, if I remember. Uh, Saurabh, go ahead and answer this question, please. Yeah, uh, uh, all I have to say is uh, uh, one hour, 40 minutes uh, would be more than enough, I guess, uh, for your, uh, considered as a layover time, because I had a layover time of around 55 minutes, and um, people coming with me had even lesser layover times. So it would, should not be a concern, and you can easily make it in one hour, 55 minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, yes, please. go ahead. I would like to add something sure. for Saurabh's answer. So it's if one hour forty five minutes layout time is good unless and until it's your port of entry to yours. It may take some more time for you guys to clear the customs, so make sure you have at least two hours or more to whichever is wherever is your port of entry. Thank you. Right. Um I, mean, I, I want to address the, you know, the question on port of entry as well because uh, there's one more question here which says, uh, I'll be flying from Denver to Phoenix. Uh, will will book that local flight ticket once I get to know MS Computer Engineering orientation date. So will I have someone to receive me and guide me towards temporary accommodation? Uh, what will uh, what will the situation be like? Kindly let me know. Um, Shabrij, I hope you're addressing to the situation that uh, will you will be picked only if and only if you land in Phoenix, because uh, Indian Student Association um, is a part of ASU. It's an organization uh, at ASU. So if you land in Phoenix, then yes, please fill out the form, and uh, yes, you will be picked. Cool. So, all right. So uh, let's move on to the next question. It's from Shashank. Uh, it's about health insurance. He says, which is better, the one offered by the university or the private health insurance from India? Health insurance premiums of policies offered by ICC seem cheaper for the same benefits. Um, okay, uh, Vijeta, would you like to answer this question? Yes, I will go ahead and answer that question. Health insurance provided by ASU, I am not sure if you can take some other insurance by any other company. Uh, ASU says that you have to take the insurance provided by them, the health insurance. and. Uh, about other companies, uh, I cannot answer that, but uh, I'm, I'm telling you that uh, the health insurance provided by ASU is generic. It gives you all the benefits except uh, uh, optical and dental insurance. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay. Vishwa, can I add something to it? Sure, Nishan, go ahead. Yeah, about this health insurance, uh, uh, there are certain things which you have to compare between every, uh, every health insurance given by two different companies. Uh, in ASU, it is given by a company called as Aetna, A-E-T-N-A, and you have to compare every damn thing, every little detail to make sure that it has the same features of what ASU does. And uh, people have been smart and have dabbed, tried to do that as in uh, have uh, have compared a lot and tried to get over with uh, get an override saying that we have a we have a, a health insurance from another company and we are paying less over there. But ASU and what we have seen is ASU does not allow that. They have some reason or the other. They, they usually come up with some reason or the other to uh, not allow the, the health insurance from India. So I would say take your decision. Be wise on that. If you don't want to take two health insurances and lose your money. 
Thanks for clarifying that, Nishant. Uh, let's quickly move on to the next question. Uh, so Anupam Pant asks, I don't know anyone at ASU. How can I get an apartment lease from India? Uh, can I reach there and do it? Can someone from ISA help me with leasing? Uh, Nishant, um, I think it's your forte. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> since you don't know anybody in ISA, I would suggest please get in touch with your seniors. It is very important to network with your seniors. And uh, and you can always look up uh, the reviews on every apartment uh, homes at uh, on the on their website and, and uh, on certain internet sites. So I would suggest get in touch with your seniors, uh, have a rapport with them. And in terms of ISA helping you, if you're not able to do anything of these sorts, you shoot us a mail. We will try as much as we will try our, uh, uh, as much as possible to help you out in this in this concept. Cool. Uh, I'm done. Yeah, cool. I uh, got it. Um, so the next question is, uh, I'm going to San Diego on 24th July and will reach ASU on the 3rd of August. Will it be okay if I report to ISSC on the 3rd of August? Um, Shiva, would you like to answer that question? Go ahead, Shiva. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Uh, on 24th of July and you'll be reaching here late, right? So I would suggest you check out the ISSO website. It's got the contact listed uh, for the ISSO office and the hours as well. So you might want to mail them and ask them about like, uh, since it's a special case, you you might want to ask them like what what is the procedure to follow and like they might if they are allowed if they are, they they might check in uh, check you in through an uh, online way then I think that should be possible but I uh, strongly recommend that you get in touch with them uh, through an email and you you will get a reply from them within like uh, like their their, their their whatever is their business commitment so they will give you a reply soon yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Next question. Um, it's from Soham Ghosh. He asks, I'm arriving on 6th of August. My port of entry is Houston. Uh, my time gap at port of entry is 1 hour 55 minutes. Is there a chance I risk missing my connecting flight? And if so, will ISA arrange an alternate pickup when I arrive at Tempe and let them know of my arrival? Uh, we uh, we already answered this question on uh, flight in the layovers. Um, but I would like to redirect this question to Supriya. Uh, Supriya, go ahead. Yeah, since you have one hour fifty five minutes, there's pretty much chance to get your customs clear. But in case you miss your uh, connecting flight, just drop us an email or call us and inform that you will be coming in next flight. So if there is any changes in your flight, so that we can manage people I mean, for pick you up. So. Shiva, please take over. Next question. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Shiva here again. Uh, I think the okay. The next question is. How do we come to know the pickup has been received by ISA? And I think uh, Nishant will be able to answer this question. Go ahead, Nishant. As a matter of fact, I don't get your question correctly. Uh, I think if you if you are trying to say that. Uh, uh, yeah. You want to know whether ISA knows that you're arriving here and you have signed up for the pickup, then I think uh, the volunteer assigned to you shall be contacting you at least a week before your uh, departure date. And uh, yeah, you would, uh, and he'll be giving you the contact details uh, and he'll be coordinating with you. And that's that is all he meant. Uh, and also to add, add with you, when you sign up with the ISE, uh, ISA gets all the inform information people who are coming coming here. The, all the Indian students, we have the information when people are coming in. So depending on that, we manage the volunteers to come and pick you up. 
So I would say, yeah, I would say you are in good hands. Thank you. Thank you, Nishan. Uh, so, Shiva, I'm back on. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry, I'll take over. <laughs> Good. Experiencing some connectivity problems. Um, sorry. Um, so, I mean, I just would like to, you know, uh, at this point, I mean, since many of you have questions on port of entry, let me just clear it out for people, you know, uh, who still have doubts. So, port of entry, as the name suggests, is the first airport that you land in the United States of America. I mean, depending you know, on your itinerary, this may or may not be Phoenix. You know, for, I mean, in, um, uh, so home's case it, it is Denver so it could be anywhere else but so I mean um, you will have to undergo immigration check uh, you know so check on uh, arrival at the port of entry so this the immigration officers will check your documents uh, typically I think your visa your I-94 I-20 so please uh, refer the link for further details uh, you can find more info online cool so let's take the next question um, how do we come to know that the pickup has been received by uh, ISA? So I think by what he means is, um, I mean, if I, I think he's, he's trying to ask if we have received the form. Yes, so please go ahead and fill the form. Uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, receive uh, an email with, as soon as you know uh, you fill out the form. So it will be arranged. So do not worry about that. So just uh, provide us with uh, all the details. So we'll take care of that. Um, anyway, so Tushar Negi asks, a group of 9 to 10 people will be reaching Phoenix on the 3rd of August, Sunday at 9.30 p.m. Will the ISA be able to pick us up at that time of the night? Um, as I told you, uh, time should not be a constraint and, I mean, rather will not be a constraint. There will be a volunteer uh, to pick you up, but since it's a group of 10, we, we probably should have several volunteers to pick you up. Uh, so don't worry, I mean, we should, you should be taken care of. Um, Okay, so the next question is, what is I-94? Uh, where is it issued? So the latter part of this question, so it is issued at, at the port of entry. So the immigration officer will check your documents, uh, visa, and your I-20. Uh, nowadays, it's electronically done. So you can actually come home and then go to the website, the US government website, and then uh, print a copy of your I-94. Uh, however, uh, the I-94 uh, will be, uh, the link to I-94 and all the details will be put up on the website. So please follow up on the website um, to get more information on the I-94. Thank you. Cool. Um, okay, so the next question is, what kind of clothing is common at ASU? Okay, um, so uh, Vaishnavi, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, the general climate here at ASU is hot. So according to me, there are only two seasons here. So one's the summer and the other is the winter. So winter is mostly in, uh, it'll be spaced out from November to say Jan or Feb. So you can come here and buy winter clothes. That's not a problem when you probably don't want to carry heavy stuff. But summer, yes, it's, it's raging hot during the summer. The temperatures go up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So you might want to carry some light cotton clothes. Um, just wear what you're comfortable in. And another thing that I'd like to add is most of the rooms at ESU are, or most of the places at Tempe are uh, equipped with AC. So once you come, uh, once you step in from outside, you will actually feel so cold that you want to uh, wear a cardigan or a sweater or something. So um, it's totally up to you. You just go ahead and be comfortable in what you wear. And that's about it. Back to you, Vishwa. Cool. Thank you so much, Vaishnavi. That answer is perfect. <laughs> OK, so the next question is from Shirang. Yeah. So the question is, which ID card is better for use, the normal card and a different bank debit card? Or should we go for a pitch for card? That's a good question, man. Uh, Shiva, um, yeah. please go ahead and answer this question. OK, good. So uh, I think you're referring to the Sun card or uh, the pitchfork card if I'm not wrong and uh, like uh, I would like to just just a moment I'd like to show you something it's uh, is the screen visible visible to everyone oh it is okay so just for everyone's uh, benefit I'm just explaining so ASU does of ASU has a partnership with uh, Midfirst Bank and they have this uh, I'm sorry for that uh, so they have the service uh, in which they have they do issue uh, ID come uh, debit card which is known as a pitchfork card. It's shown here at the top, and this is your Sun card. 
and uh, like you say like you see the site does specify what are the features that uh, come with it and i do urge you to go and check for yourself and personally speaking it's a uh, i would say it's a personal uh, opinion and personal preference so uh, you, you can go ahead with either and you should be fine with it so just to show you the, so this is the this is the sun card oh, just hold on a second again okay so yeah the sun card looks something like this and it's got a single strip and this meant for uh, access uh, this gets you access through all the buildings and all the services uh, that asu offers whereas the pitchfork card on the contrary has a black band on the top this is meant for your this serves as your asu id and while this is for your debit card purposes and other payments are you so yeah and like i said i would like to reiterate it's a personal opinion and you would like to uh, it's like uh, you might want to have your debit card and id in one place or you can have it separate and it doesn't make much of a difference cool i was hoping you would show your card and you did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so the next question is, I'm arriving. I hope I didn't show my account number through. <laughs> I didn't show the card number through. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so okay, let's uh, take up the next question. So the next question is, um, I'm landing at New York and will be living there for a few days. Okay, so that's your fourth country. Got it. So what should I do uh, with service check-in? Okay, can I do it when I come to Tempe? Okay, Anupam, um, I would like to clarify this. So, SEVIS stands for Student Exchange and Visitor Information System. So, it's a school document. So, SEVIS has something to do with uh, ASU. So, once you arrive in Tempe, you have, you know, once you go visit uh, ISSC, um, so that's where you do your SEVIS check-in. I hope I clarified that. Awesome. Okay, so, the next question is from Nishant. Um, he asked, I'm arriving on a Saturday, will the ISSO be open on Sunday? Okay, uh, Nishant, um, ISSO, uh, it's now got as ISSC, um, so it, it's um, it's actually closed on um, weekends. It's only open from Monday to Friday, from 8 a.m. in the morning until 5 p.m. in the evening. Uh, and uh, there are advising sessions um, which happen uh, from 9 to 11 on, um, and 2 to 4 p.m. on um, from Monday to Friday. So yes, I mean, it's, it's closed on uh, weekends. Uh, if you could quickly take down the phone number for ISSC, I'll be providing it right away. Uh, the phone number is 480, that's the area code for Phoenix. Um, so 480-727-4776. Okay, let me repeat that. It's 480-727-4776. And the email address would be ISOE. I S O E advisor as an A D V I S O R at ASU.edu. So let me repeat that again. It's I S O E A D V I S O R at ASU.edu. Got it. Um, okay. So the next question is from Tushar. He asks, um, which bank would be a good option for an account? Also, which four and card Royce Mid First Bank? How is Mid First? Uh, I think uh, the second part of the question has already been answered. However, the first part of the question, um, I would like to hand it over to um, Vikas. Vikas, would you like to answer the bank's question, please? Uh, yeah, we sure, surely. Uh, I would say uh, it's a personal choice to uh, to choose like which bank you want to open an account with. Uh, but uh, there are several banks in the vicinity of ASU. Uh, I could name them like the, uh, there is Bank of America, Chase Bank, Midfirst Bank. Uh, Arizona Credit Union uh, and uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, they have different policies. Uh, you can know about their policies uh, through their websites. Also, you can visit them when you reach here. Uh, you can talk with the uh, the people, the officials over there. Uh, uh, they are very amicable. They will answer to your all queries. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, you can decide it uh, on yourself uh, when you know their policies. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for it. Thanks, Ishwa. All righty, thank you. Uh, so the next question, as a Polytechnic campus student, where would be the preferred choice of stay? Uh, Yashwant. OK, Yashwant. Um, um, the Polytechnic is a campus which is uh, in Mesa, uh, which is around um, 30, 30 miles, 25 to 30 miles from Tempe. Um, well, the best option uh, to stay, um, uh, there is no best option because if you want to live in an Indian community, I mean, people do live in uh, Tempe, live in around Tempe. 
uh, my friends were polytechnic students and they used to commute every day from Tempe to a poly campus. Uh, that should not be a problem as well. However, if you find roommates, uh, I mean, if you find like a group of four, if you're a group of four, you could as well stay in Gilbert. Gilbert is a wonderful place to stay as well. So it should not be a problem. Uh, if you're wondering about the commute, uh, there's a gold shuttle which commutes every day from Tempe to poly, Shut poly campus. So I mean, um, uh, most of my uh, friends who study in poly campus, um, you know, take the shuttle every day. So travel should not be a problem. Uh, you could, um, I mean, I mean uh, verify. You could sit down. You know, you know, this is the pros and cons, and then um, arrive at a solution. That would be the best option. Okay. Um, so, okay. The next question is, how to pay for rent online? Uh, is it possible? Uh, okay. Um, I would like to uh, re uh, redirect this question to um, Vikas. Vikas, would you like to answer this question? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, to pay rent online, uh, various apartments have the websites where they have option of online payment. Uh, this can be done to uh, e-checks, uh, which uh, you will know when you come here and talk to the bank officials. They would uh, explain you the procedures you need to follow to uh, give your e-check numbers and all such things. Uh, but uh, I, I should say that uh, not all the apartments provide this facility. Uh, uh, this facility. So, um, I mean, yeah, uh, that's pretty much of it. You will have to pay it uh, in person then uh, with DD, uh, which uh, you uh, you can get from various 7-Eleven stores over here. I say, I think uh, that's it. Thank you, Vishwa. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. So let's take the next question quickly. Um, okay, before we take the next question, for those of you who just joined, uh, so this is how you can post questions. So there's a link on the, the event page on Google Plus. So please click on the link. Uh, you know, fill out the form, Google form, and you can ask. Uh, you can start asking questions. Okay. All right. So let's, let's quickly move to the next question. Um, I'm not able to get any confirmation for submission of pickup, so no mail or confirmation after submission on the website also. How do we know if the form has been submitted? Uh, Vamshi there asks uh, this question. Uh, Vamshi, we have already addressed this question. Um, so I mean, uh, if you have filled out the form, we would you would uh, you know get a confirmation soon. The volunteers uh, are busy. Uh, however, you need to hear uh, and you will get an email from ISC soon. Uh, if you don't, uh, I mean, you know what to do, right? So, okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, I've heard uh, regarding acquiring mobile phones that we need to provide with some sort of proofs, which may be SSN or something, and would require any senior to register on our behalf. How true is this? Karan Shah asks this question. Uh, Vijeta, would you like to answer that question? Sure. So in my experience, um, even when I got, uh, went to get my mobile phone, uh, they asked my assistant, but you can openly tell them that you do not have an assistant right now, so they will understand your situation. And uh, I do not think that any senior on your behalf would have to register for you. You can easily, with the help of your passport, which is your ID for now, and your I-20 or Sun Devil card if required, if you can carry it, that'll be great. So you can carry your documents, which are mainly I-20 and uh, Sun Devil card and your passport, and you can uh, get any form of any uh, carrier phone or mobile phone or anything. That should not be a problem at all. And uh, no senior on behalf of you would have to register for anything. Thank you. Uh, I would like to add something to this. Uh, so there are certain service providers who require an SSN uh, and certain do not. So I think you guys should be fine uh, and there shouldn't be any problems as uh, Vijayata said. Okay, I, um, so there are a lot of questions coming up here. So we better keep it terse and uh, not to the point. Okay. All right, so let's move to the next question. Um, all right, the next question is, um, as I'm a West Campus applicant, so I need to get everything registered at West Campus, West Campus or Tempe Campus only. Moreover, I'm not able to find my many people as of now who are going to the West Campus. So it is feasible to do up, down from Tempe to West. OK, so that, uh, it's the same uh, issue with uh, Polytechnic. Or so Tempe is the main campus, yes, but there are shuttles free shuttles which run every day from uh, Tempe campus to West campus. So I've been to West campus in the shuttle as well, So which is free of service again, which is free of frost again. So it's provided by ASU. 
Um, so and regarding registering, there is um, yeah, the building name is UCB building room number 120 at the West Campus. So I think um, you'll have to go there and register. Um, yeah, so that answers your question. All right, uh, so let's take the next question. Okay, so um, Honey Kiran asks, how accessible are ASU resources such as labs, libraries, sports facilities? Are they available 24-7? Okay, uh, Vijayta, since you work in uh, one of the complexes that is the Sun Devil Fitness Center, would you like to answer this question? Yes. People who do not know what is Sun Devil Fitness Center, it's the gym area which is used by Sun Devils. And how accessible are labs? So it's different for different departments. So mostly, yes, it's open up till a uh, very long time. It's open up till 12 sometimes and during exams overnight as well. Libraries are open overnight, yes. Labs, it depends upon your department again. and. Uh, as far as Sun Devil Fitness Center is, uh, I think it's opened up till 9, 11 o'clock for most of the days. So you can use the gym up till 11 with using your Sun Devil card. So that should not be a problem at all. So here resources are open up till midnight for sure. So you do not have to worry about that. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to add something. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, so uh, regarding the libraries, uh, you can check out the ASU library uh, site which uh, actually uh, specifies the hours for the various libraries. There are at least, I think, four to five libraries around here. And uh, Hayden Library has uh, normally, it's uh, open overnight. And regarding labs, uh, dip, uh, dip, you might have access depending on the courses you've taken. There are certain labs which are general. There are certain labs that are tied to a particular subject. And uh, and regarding the availability of the lab, some of them are actually 24-7. We are actually right now in a lab. So yeah, we are right now broadcasting to you live from a lab. So yeah, so that's, that's about it, yeah. OK, uh, thank you, Shiva, for clarifying that. Okay, the next question is, most of the apartments have rooms available only after 16th of August. And I'll be arriving on 6th of August. So can you suggest um, something, some temporary accommodation? OK. Arundhati, yes, um, we do provide temporary accommodation. But it's limited. I mean, it it will be for a maximum of three days. Uh, as I address the issue, uh, we have a lot of people coming in and we need to accommodate people. So And we have a limited ap apartments as well. So what I would suggest is, um, I mean, opt for temporary accommodation for the first three days, and um, you know you could contact one of your friends or seniors. You know, it's all about networking, right? So you can contact your friends and uh, you know ask them to provide you temporary accommodation. I think that would be the best option. Um, if nothing works out, uh, please let us know. We'll see if anything can be done. Okay. All right, so the next question is, uh, any idea what document should be brought from here in order to speed up the process of opening a bank account? Uh, Lakshmi uh, has asked this question. I think we already addressed the bank issue, but however, um, if uh, Shiva, want you, would you like to add something to it? We want to just fine tune the answer. Uh, I think regarding bank opening, all you require is your, the, the ba most basic identification document as an international student you have here is your uh, 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 your passport. So I think that's the that's the primary thing they require, and I don't think require anything more as far as I remember. In certain cases, they might ask for it for an I-20 if you are saying you are a student and you are offering you are offered some kind of a student account. Then yes, but I I think these are the only two documents you need to. Have. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so there's an important question here. Um, Suhas asks, um, Hi, my course will be based on the Mesa. Uh, I think he's referring to the Poly campus, if I'm not wrong. And I plan to stay on campus there. Great choice. Uh, so is the pickup and drop facility only for the Tempe campus? Uh, that's a very good, good question to ask. As the super shuttle, um, you know, the, the sh shuttle service at the airport, you can, uh, you know, you can just board the super shuttle and give them uh, the address. They can drop you anywhere you want. So they could drop you to Mesa. They could drop you to Gilbert. So just provide them with the address where you want to go, and uh, they'll take you there. Okay. So, okay. Next question is from Varun K. Uh, the question is, okay, how are uh, the on-campus jobs? I mean, I would like to know more about the general perception of the availability of the same. Are they available for a fresher who joins for masters? Okay. Um, uh, so, Saurabh, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, sure. Uh, as far as the on-campus jobs are. Uh, Regarding the on-campus jobs, I could say that there ASU is a big enough university, and you get a lot of on-campus 
job available all the time all around the year so in fact you can uh, start applying to the on campus jobs from right now before coming here you just have to log on to your asu portal go to the student services center and then you can there you can find a asu employment link from where you uh, would be able to apply for the on campus jobs uh, yeah if you are a master student and you're a, you are a first year master or even a first semester master student it the jobs are available for you and uh, what i would like to suggest is like keep applying and apply to as many as jobs as you can which you think you can do and try to make your resume apt for the job you have to do alterations in your resume and your cover letter so that it's it seems that it is more specifically directed towards that specific job which will give a good impression so that would be it, i guess can i add something to it can i okay. uh hi uh, about the jobs there are two sections over here one is the student hourly and the other one the other one is the federal study as an international student you will be allowed to opt for the job apply for the jobs which are uh, under student uh, hourly so uh, so you are eligible eligible for all such jobs in terms of general perception since uh, there are a lot of indians here to get a part time job there it's very competitive so i just want to bring that to your notice also i just want to add something really small uh, people sitting in india you can still apply to on campus jobs it's not required that you have to come here and start applying there is in your my asu page there is a uh, campus services tab under which there is student employment page so you can go there put your resumes in and start applying with your asu id numbers so don't worry about that Okay, everybody wanted to pitch in on that question. Uh, thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, okay, let's move quickly move on to the next question. Okay, the next question is, uh, okay, how are the pollution levels in Tempe? Are there dust storms? I have a few allergy issues. Funny Kiran asked this question. Okay, so. I think uh, I can take that. Sure, sure, sure. I, I, will, I, I was giving it to you, man. It's all yours. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, pollution levels in Tempe are pretty low, considering like uh, we have stayed in India for a major part of our lives. And so I don't think that should be a problem. But yeah, I would be, uh, you need to consider where you're living. And please don't forget that Arizona has a desert kind of climate and dust storms are a reality. Uh, I myself was uh, allergic to dust and uh, I find myself like less prone to allergy over here. But uh, having said that, like pre uh, prevention is better than cure. So if you are prone to any kind of specific allergy, and uh, I would suggest you contact your physician immediately and uh, uh, carry the required uh, medication and do have a prescription along with you when you carry. So yeah, that's that's all. That's all I can say. And uh, just to add, uh, ASU also has an uh, advisory service, so they do warn you in advance about uh, uh, dust storms or any other kind of event. And yeah, the weather predictions are quite accurate. And when they say it happens. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Shiva. Uh, I would like to add just one point. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Vaishnavi. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to say I can watch for the less pollution thing. My skin is completely cleared up, so I just wanted to say that. Right, right. Uh, okay, on a serious note, uh, yeah, you you have to have an RX prescription if you have an allergy, okay, from your doctor. Okay. Um, so next question from Tushar Negi: Are the stoves there induction based or electric hot plates? Uh, it it varies from one apartment to another. There are a lot of uh, apartments in on the campus. So it's really difficult to tell which one you know has uh, this thing. Uh, however, you won't be using cola wood, right? So it doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, so okay, we have uh, okay an interesting point from Nagesh. Okay, this is not a question, but where are you all guys taking up the hangout? All seem to be in a lab or something. We really appreciate what you're doing, taking up ha ha hangouts from the lab for us. Yes, Nagesh, you are spot on. Uh, <laughs> we are actually live broadcasting this to over 200 people and we have answered 65 questions so far. Uh, so for those of you who just joined in, uh, please go to the events page on Google Plus. Uh, there's a link. Um, you know, please fill out the Google form, sign up and start posting questions. We'll answer all your queries. Thank you. Uh, yeah, on that note, if this is your uh, 
you know if you are a computer science student or an electrical student trust me man this this is going to be your second home <laughs> okay anyway um Okay, the next question is: Is it advisable to get Indian debit cards and credit cards? Um, okay, um, all right. So the best person to answer that question would be, I think, Vikas. Would Vikas? Would you like to say something? Yeah, Vishwa, sure. Uh, I I can say that uh, Indian credit cards would work uh, because they will be mostly used for online banking, online uh, transactions. Uh, they can also withdraw money from ATMs. Uh, I'm not sure about Indian debit cards, but uh, I can say that they won't work here. Uh, but yeah, if you are having some online shopping, uh, you can use your uh, Indian debit cards. I would say, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's always advisable. Uh, I mean, uh, to take uh, to get credit cards from here as well as debit cards from the bank, which is uh, which is having your accounts. Uh, that's it, I guess. Thank you. Uh, I would like to add something to it. Uh, like Vikas said, most most credit card, debit cards are like either Visa, Mastercard, or Maestro, and they would be like uh, acceptable worldwide. So he's spot on over there. and uh, the reason he says that you should get the cards over here is because most of these indian cards and the indian companies might charge you extra if you use them for payments here so if uh, uh, it's best to uh, contact your respective card provider and get that cleared out and if there is nothing like that it's good you you're good to go i even want to add something to this uh, about indian cards being useful for uh, Uh, transactions online i believe it is not for every card it depends on the bank there are certain uh, restrictions in uh, for example in the website like amazon uh, where certain cards do not work if you certain indian debit cards do not work for transaction so if you want to yeah, so that i i would suggest you to get cleared from the bank authorities i think it's it's more of a very uh, a uh, technical detail which uh, i would not want to bring it up here so please uh, google it up and even talk to your uh, bank god thank you nishant uh, okay let's go to the more the next question next question is from rakesh he asks i've heard that app- appliances work in a different voltage there uh, so should we rather buy them in us like electric cooker uh, toaster something sorry uh, uh, why should please go ahead and answer the question Yeah, so uh, so we have two different kinds of appliances. One is the electric, and one is the electronic. So if you have electronic gadgets like, as in say, um, uh, like your laptops or your mobile phones, you can easily get an adapter in India, like uh, to convert to the US type of uh, plugins. So you can get that, so you don't have to worry about that. But when it comes to electrical gadgets, I suggest you come out here and buy your stuff because um, heating. Uh, if it has a heating coil in the equipment, then it's going to take a really long time to uh, uh, heat up. So um, that's one big suggestion I will give you. If it's electrical, come here and buy it. If it's electronic, you can manage either ways. Yeah. Back to you, Vishnu. Uh, I would like to add certain things to it. Uh, sorry, Vishnu. Uh, the thing is, like uh, you are correct when you say the voltage ratings in India are different from. Uh, us so we uh, we here use appliances that are rated for 120 volt and around 60 hertz and uh, like in case of laptops most power supplies are comp- uh, compatible to both power uh, both power rate uh, both kind of su- supply ratings so there is a chance that uh, uh, it might be compatible over here but you might need a different adapter uh, that that is compatible with the sockets that are present in usa so that's that's why uh, vaishnavi has asked you to uh, check for an adapter so you might want to check the power rating before uh, getting it here else it would be a waste in terms of the luggage space and all that money you spend in bringing it here and then finding out it doesn't work here yep thank you so much uh, okay the so next question is uh, the graduate student electrical engineering states that msc degree people are not eligible for internships after completion of all the courses so how to seek opt or cbt i think um, shiva please go ahead and answer that question because it's your uh, field of expertise sorry uh i'll try to answer the later part of the question first so how to seek opt or cpt uh the 
the guidelines for uh, and the guidelines and the procedure for is uh, given in detail. I would uh, suggest that you Google ASU CPT or ASU OPT and you will get all the requirements and the procedure to go about applying for it. I'm afraid I cannot uh, provide much information uh, about the degree and uh, why they are not eligible or is it uh, is that the reality I would suggest that you contact your graduate advisor I, I am I'm sure you'll be assigned one so uh, I think they are the best people to answer questions about that okay. thank you so much okay Monil Mehta asks how to pay the fees for the first semester uh, because would you like to take the question Definitely. Uh, there are actually two modes of payment of fees. One is uh, online, another another is in person. Uh, online, uh, there are uh, there is an uh, option of uh, international wire transfer. ASU has partnered with Peer Wire Transfer, uh, which is a third party organization. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you can get the tutorial uh, on the ASU tuition and building website. Uh, there, this peer transfer thing will provide. Uh, uh, a swift code for uh, for your Indian bank, uh, which they can use for wire transfer, and this money will be transferred to your ASU account. Another thing which you can do is you can get an international ID, uh, which uh, your bank will uh, provide uh, in the name uh, along with uh, the their, their partner banks in USA. This uh, this uh, DD you can present in front of the ASU uh, account section, and they will accept your fees. One more thing you can do is uh, there is a thing like uh, um, there are checks uh, which uh, you can take uh, which you can use for your bank account in USA. So when you come here in USA, uh, you can open your account. You can transfer the fees uh, internationally via transfer uh, into your account in USA, and you can use the check uh, of your account uh, to just transfer the fees uh, to ASU account, and that's how you can pay your fees. Uh, I would say that's the option uh, and that's generally what Indian students do here thank you uh, Vishwa okay. uh, thank you so uh, the next question is uh, from Yashwant again uh, he says I'm planning to arrive on August 14th is it too late um, Supriya um, president would you like to answer the question thanks uh, uh, arriving on August 14th is not late but like since you have your orientation on 15th you should but you don't have any jet lag, so you don't miss your orientation. You, you are pretty much fine if you arrive on 14th. All right. Thank you, Supriya. Okay, let's quickly move on to the next question. Uh, Shashank asks, what happens when you miss your connecting flight? Will the airlines arrange for free or should we pay for the next flight? Uh, okay, uh, Saurabh, would you like to answer that question? Please, Saurabh, go ahead. Yeah, sure, Vishwa. Uh, the question says, uh, what happens if you miss a connecting flight? So, uh, I think the best way out when you miss a connecting flight is not to panic and uh, talk to the airport people, the customer service people at the airport of your specific airlines and get your next ticket and make sure that you let the ISA people know that you have missed your flight and yeah, let us also know the your next following booking and your arrival time here in uh, Phoenix Airport so that we can uh, pick you up uh, with that and uh, for your uh, for your usage you can uh, uh, bring the ISA uh, president and the vice president numbers that are up on the website and you will also be getting the volunteers phone contact numbers uh, one week before your uh, scheduled departure so you should keep all those things handy so that uh, in times of emergency you can use them and contact them thank you all right all right so um for the next question um Okay, uh, next question is from Neeraj. It says, do you recommend any specific templates or guidelines that needs to be followed while applying to jobs available in campus or out of campus? Oh, I think we answered this question already, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Saurabh, would you like to add something to it? Uh, um, specific templates, as in, uh, as I said earlier, that you should stick to a specific resume and a specific cover letter for every job that you apply to so that it looks more specific and, and directed towards that job uh, because there are a lot of job openings and if you keep on sending the same uh, rehearsed kind of uh, resume 
you know might not work out for you so better make 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 it specific to the job and according to requirements that that the job requires it should be fine thank you uh, okay just uh, i would like to add something oh sure sure sorry vikas go ahead yeah uh, there are actually asu career services uh, which will help you with uh, making resumes and your cover letters so uh, when you come here you can take the appointments online uh, through your my asu account or you can uh, or you can uh, call them they they have their number on the website uh, which you can surf through uh, through google uh, and uh, i mean uh, uh, they are very very good uh, they will help you with every step so um, i guess that so that can be one way thank you okay i forgot one point can i add it for yeah. uh, you will find the layout you will find the uh, format for the cover letter and the resume is to uh, career services website uh, i think you should look into that and make your cover letter and resume in the same format thank you thank you so much guys for clarifying that all right so 79 okay the next question is do we get our existing mobile phones from india i heard that mobile phones are cheaper here cheaper there comparatively um okay nishant please go ahead answer the question uh as a I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, if you have a mobile phone over here, I would, I would suggest you to check the certain modern works at quad band and tri band frequencies. You could always check with your mobile model number at uh, gsmarena.com or any other uh, such uh, sites. And about it being cheaper, I pretty much think it costs the same. It might get to the cheaper if you buy an unlocked phone. So that's more of a personal question. So. Yes, that would be my answer. Cool. Uh, I think okay. I need to add something. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> uh, regarding cheap or not, uh, I think it's a stereotype that's been created uh, in terms of contract and non-contract phones. So you might want to check out. In certain cases, it is true. In I don't. It might not be true in most cases. So you're like uh, you, you're highly advised to bring your phone because as soon as you arrive, you may not uh, get get a. You may not have access to any other phone. So you just need a SIM card and just add it to your phone, and at least you have some kind of connectivity. So yeah, do bring your phones if it is compatible with the US standards, and you're free to then go ahead to up and go, free to upgrade in case you want. Okay. Uh, so before we move on to the next question, a quick update. Uh, we have stopped taking questions uh, because we have too many questions already to answer. So and we are running out of time. Uh, if you still have queries and if you still feel unanswered, please drop in an email. Uh, we'll try to reply as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Let's take the next question quickly. Okay. So how much? I want. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Um, all right. What would be the nominal living cost excluding rent? Okay, I know it depends from one person to person, but an average number would help me again. Harsh Kumar is asking that question. Um, okay, Vijay, how would you like to answer that? Sure. Uh, so again, the rent depends on how many people you are living with and where you are living with. So it completely depends. But including rent, it would cost you around four hundred to five hundred dollars. So if we remove the rent, you would have to pay for your internet. You would have to pay for your mobile bill and for your groceries and personal expenses. I would say probably uh, it could cost you around somewhere one fifty to two hundred dollars. I'm telling excluding rent. So it would. uh again it depends to the individual that how he or she spends so but i would just say an average living would cost you around 150 to 200 dollars excluding rent yeah thank you all right thank you so much sorry for that delay um all right so the next question is if in case i don't find an isa volunteer at the airport is there any help desk located in any spot in the airport where can we reach out Ah uh, yes, um, as I explained earlier, uh, there are help desks at the airport, and there are also pay phones at the airport. So if you are carrying quarters, you know it would come handy. You could give us a call. Uh, yeah, so please, um, you know, carry, um, you know, uh, um, uh, the phone numbers of an ISA volunteer as well as uh, you know uh, one of the board members' uh, email address or phone number. So you could contact us, and please let us know um, if you if you need it. Okay. All right. The next question is: uh, Do we have any ASU classified link that we can use to search accommodation? Okay. So, uh, Saurabh, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, the, I don't think we have a classified link to 
search for accommodation but there are some services where which you can just check out and compare the distances and uh, and the as the and the average rents of various uh, um, uh, communities here around the campus uh, but you will not find some place to book or some place to specifically search for apartments uh, via ASU. Okay, cool. Um, all right, the next question is from Soham. He asks, this is a very important question actually. I was wondering you know, why it, uh, it hasn't come up already. Okay, the question is, I want to carry some processed food like spices and oats in my cabin baggage. Um, do I need to mention food in any customs declaration form? Okay, the best answer would be, I'll say, uh, you're not supposed to carry rice and grains. Uh, I mean, like anything, you know, that that can carry germs or any seeds that can reproduce. Uh, however, you need you need not have to declare it in customs. Uh, but if asked, be truthful. That would be the best answer. Okay, okay let's move to the next question. Uh, Bishwa, uh, I just need to add something about okay. it. Go ahead, uh, there is a generic resource that you can uh, uh, refer before, uh, like, getting your... Uh, before packing everything, uh, the the website is www.tsa.gov. It's a transportation security administration website, and they have a link for prohibited items. They have a dialog box where you just type in whatever you're gonna bring, and it's gonna uh, uh, and it's gonna tell you whether it's allowed or not. So it's a, it's an excellent resource, I think, and all of you should refer it before like deciding what to pack and what not. All right, so let's move on to the next question quickly. Um, all right. Um, if we answer, okay, how are the fees to be paid by peer transfer, or is there any other way? Every month, how should our parents? All right. How should our parents transfer their living expenses? I guess Sayali has asked this question. Um, Vikas, would you like to answer this question? I know you answered this question earlier, uh, but it's a bit different. If you like to fine tune it and add something more to it. Yeah, uh, I told uh, earlier that uh, uh, there are certain ways to pay peer transfer. If you can check the video, uh, you will find it. Uh, about the living expenses and the money transferred from your parents, uh, I would say that uh, uh, what generally people here do is they have for this forex cards uh, uh, issued by various banks. So what uh, what they have the policy is like uh, the uh, parents uh, uh, deposit the money in the forex cards and uh, this uh, money can be withdrawn from the, uh, the ATMs over here. Uh, however, there are certain charges which uh, are applied by the banks from India and from the US banks, uh, uh, which uh, varies. Uh, so I mean that's the general uh, procedure that our Indian students follow over here. Uh, I, if anyone would like to add something else, uh, feel free. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to add something. Uh, it's a good idea to like. Uh, it's like I mean, I won't say it's recommended. I mean, I did that. What I did is, uh, whenever I get my fee transferred, I uh, actually uh, get the living expense uh, transferred along with it. So that way, you optimize on the uh, uh, international wire transfer charge that that the bank charges you. So that's an option as well. You can think about that. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have a few more questions uh, lined up. All right. So let's quickly take the next one. Okay. Yaitraj asks, um, if the classes are held at the east side of ASU and I book up an apartment on the west side, uh, will it be a problem? Um, Vaishnavi, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, sure. Um, so the question is, if the class are held at the east side of AIDS, you were in a OK. So as long as you have um, proper forms of transportation, like if you have a bicycle or you use the orbit around here, and you stick to the timing, that shouldn't be a problem. But then again, uh, it is kind of an inconvenience. And I would say that you should uh, be closer to your department. Um, that's the best possible answer I can give. Uh, look up the rent and your other facilities, pro proximity to your department and uh, departmental stores, groceries and all that, and then book your apartment. Uh, check out all these options and make sure you get the best out of it. That's it. Back to you, Vishwajit. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so the next question is, um, Okay, it's from Kiran. He asks, is it possible for me to get a driving license in Arizona? All right, uh, Subriya, go ahead. Since you got a driving license recently, go ahead, answer the question. 
Yeah, is it it's possible to get a driver license at Arizona? But before getting a driver license, there is something called instruction permit. It's a online test. You have to clear that test and then get a driver license here. Um, and it can even serve as a form of identification instead of passport at Arizona. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is from Chinmay Dekni. As a passport is the only identification, is there any alternative for that so that one does not have to carry the passport around everywhere? I think the person who struggled the most without having any other form of proof, like just carrying passport everywhere, is Nishant. So I know, I know your story. So please go ahead, answer this question, please. Just to clear, I didn't have any stories, so. <laughs> So yeah, there are two forms of uh, IDs here. The one is the state ID and uh, and the uh, driving license. Uh, n not even uh, even driving license. Also, uh, the instruction permit also serves as a as a form of ID here. So well, as soon as you come over here, you should either get one of these. Uh, if you have a state ID, you don't. I mean, if you have a driving license, you don't require a state ID. But uh, for a temporary uh, thing you can take a state ID as well. So those are the two forms of identification in Arizona. All right. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So the next question is, um, okay, this question: When and how do we get uh, SSN? Okay, for those of you who don't know what SSN is, SSN is a social security number. Okay, there are two kinds here um, for for citizens as well as non-citizens. For non-citizens. Um, this is how it is. So it has to be DHS approved. Uh, DHS stands for Department of Homeland Security. So in that, in on-campus jobs, CPT, OPT, uh, they all come under um, you know uh, the, this this you know this type. So the quickest way to get an SSN is uh, you know if you get an on-campus job. Um, on-campus job, of course, you got to apply, and if you get a job, there'll be a new hire packet. You'll have to go through a series of procedures, and uh, you'll probably get your SSN within two weeks. So yeah, so that's how it is. All right. So the next question is, um, all right, the next, what is the process of, for getting a driver's license from Yogesh? Uh, I think we already answered that question. Um, mm. Okay, uh, we're getting a lot of questions on mobile service, cell phones. I think we address that situation as well. Uh, okay, there's one more question from Yashwant. He asks, uh, within how many days should the fees be paid? Okay, uh, I'm redirecting all the fees related questions to Vikas, so it would be helpful if you could answer this question as well. Yeah, uh, uh, I would say that the uh, ASU calendar provides you the deadlines that you need to follow to pay the fees. Uh, moreover, there's a finance tab in my ASU account which uh, says uh, the current amount due. Uh, when it, uh, it becomes visible and the amount of fees is shown to you, uh, you uh, that's the day when you can start paying the fees. Uh, so, I mean, that's the day of initiation of uh, paying the fees. Uh, uh, you can go through uh, calendars of ASU, the academic calendars of ASU, which will provide you the deadlines. So uh, I would say, I mean, uh, I guess uh, it's generally before the start of the college. Uh, I would suggest just to go through deadlines first. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you for keeping it us as well. Okay, we have one interesting question here. Uh, the question is from Sagar. How is the law and order situation in Tempe? Uh, for example, mugging and everything. Uh, I think um, it's better if you guys hear it from Supriya, Vaishnavi, and Vijeta. So go ahead. OK, so I'll go ahead and answer the question. So if you're worried about safety, I would say Arizona is extremely safe. We all travel late at nights because we are all sitting in the labs, as you can see even right now. We are all sitting in the labs doing our work and getting home at probably 2, 3, and it's still safe for us. We do not find any kind of hesitation to go out even late in the night. So I would call Arizona or Tempe especially extremely safe. You all should not be worried about safety especially. And um, obviously, at every place, you will have uh, one or two incidents of um, or something but um, as long as you stick to roads which are called safe you should not worry about anything that's what I would want to say um, I would like to add something to what Vijayka said right now 
it's um, I know Arizona is safe, but it's still it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. In case, in any case, if you if you come across of any unsafe situation, there is always 911 where you can reach out to local police. So, uh, yeah, they are pretty much faster than like Indian police. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to add some more to it. So it's it's actually very nice that I see this question from a guy. Um, so most quest, uh, most apartments here are gated, so you don't have to be worried about that. That's one. And second, my brother always told me, keep uh, a wad of cash in your pocket so that when you get mugged, that's the first thing you can give them if you do <laughs> get mugged. So uh, that's the best thing. Just just be aware of your uh, premises. Um, keep your eyes open and avoid all the shady streets. And I think you should be good. Thanks. Back to you, Vishwa. Uh, just to add something, uh, if it makes you feel you safe, uh, Arizona, like in Tempe especially, there are three kinds of police uh, that coexist. The ASU police, the Tempe police, and the Arizona State police. So I think we are in good hands, right? Uh, yeah, just a quick uh, addition to that. So there's a blue button uh, which you can spot in and around the campus. So in case of emergency, press the blue button and it'll it'll be directed to uh, uh, 911. So I mean, just um, I mean, um, so in case of emergency, you could you could do that as well. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll be taking in a few more questions. Um, okay. Uh, the next question is from Aditya. He asks, what are the benefits of U Pass? Uh, or the university pass regarding travel, as in commuting by buses or rail? Uh, that's a very good question, Aitya. Thank you. Um, Supriya, please go ahead and answer the question. Uh, university passes or U passes are beneficial if you are traveling, if you are using pri uh, private buses, at least thrice or four, um, more than four times a week, unless and until you, 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 you tra travel that often, you need not take university passes. But yeah, with you know, there are three kind of university passes. Like one throughout year, if you want to buy a university pass, that will cost you around two hundred bucks. Bucks, or uh, then if it's only for summer, that will cost you seventy-five dollars. And for only for a particular semester, it will cost you hundred dollars. Cool. Um, got it. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so there's one more question regarding um, uh, mobile phones here. Um, so can you explain the process followed there for acquiring mobile service? Uh, I think we already took that question, but I think Nishant was pouncing on the question. Uh, there's one more question associated with it. I'll just club these two questions and then uh, put it there. Um, one more question is, so yeah, regarding cell phones, which one is the, is the best cell phone to use? Uh, and continuing my question, uh, Shirang asked this question. So, cell phones that is with contract or an unlocked one? Um, Nishant, please uh, um, go ahead and answer the question. Uh, on a general note, the, there are two kinds of connections you can take prepaid and postpaid. You can always drop into any mobile service provider and find out their services. Uh, or there are uh, the options of a certain senior having a family plan and you getting into the family plan. That is uh, that that many of the students try to do it, or some of the new students who come over here go to a mobile service provider, and they find out if they can make a family plan. And usually, if they do make a family plan, there'll be some kind of a deposit. So you'll have to pay up and sign up for a family plan, and depending upon the services provided, there will be a bill to it, and you you pay it uh, as every month. Then. Uh, then after that, about contract and un uh, unlock phones, uh, my personal opinion is that they in a in an un in a contract phone you pay a certain amount of the phone uh, price every month, like you're paying in some kind of installment. And later in an unlock phone you just pay up the whole amount and pay up front and you buy the phone. So it's all yours. But in a contract phone, you pay up certain uh, installments of the phone for like two years or one or uh, 12 or 18 months or something like that. And then the service provider will unlock your phone and will give it to you. So that is how the thing works. And uh, I think, yeah, that's pretty much you should know about uh, the 
phone service here. Cool. Uh, thank you. So there's one more question here. So the question is, um, um, just a second. So if I want money from India, which would be the best way? Online transactions, open bank, American bank, at ASU, and I don't want to pay much on exchange. Uh, this question has been addressed. Um, so please uh, go through the live stream or the video. Um, you would have your question answered. Uh, okay. So the next question is: uh, Within how many days should the fees be paid? Uh, okay. So because would you would you like to answer this question? Uh, uh I would say I answered the question uh, like 15 minutes ago, I guess. Uh, so they can just uh, go through this video and they'll find the answer to it. All right. So the next question is: um, We have what all vaccination should we take here in India before coming here? Um, okay. So um, these are the list of vaccines uh, that I know of. So it's called MMR. MMR stands for measles, mumps, and and rubiola. Okay, I got that right. Thanks for that. So it's measles, mumps, and rubiola. You need that vaccination. So that is a requirement. Um, and if you have any allergy, a pre-medication tests, and any document which supports it, and that would be uh, recommended as well. And always, um, um, please get yourself. Uh, I don't want to say, but vaccinated before coming here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I would like to add uh, one thing. Uh, please, I'm sure that you all must have got your TB tests, but uh, carry your reports of TB tests and your vaccin vaccinations while you're coming around here. Uh, it might be needed at any case. So just carry your TB tests reports and also your vaccinations. Thank you. Uh, just to add to it, uh, if I'm correct, uh, all of you will be required to send in your proof of uh, vaccination, as Vishwa said, uh, MMR, and uh, uh, the details are on, uh, if you Google ASU immunization requirements, you'll have uh, all the information about it, and uh, so without, and, and if I'm not wrong, if you, if you do not produce the immunization results, you won't be allowed to register for classes, so uh, I guess you get that done as soon as possible. Uh, so I'd like to add just a single point uh, uh, regarding the MMR immunization certificate. Uh, whenever you take it, uh, your doctor will provide you a receipt uh, or some kind of certificate regarding that immunization. You you can just uh, take a photocopy of that or just scan it, and uh, like uh, it is asked on your my ASU that will be a, a to do task which you need. So I mean, you can just uh, put the, uh, upload that scanned copy into your MyASU account. Uh, the procedure will be given uh, on your MyASU account. That's it. All right, thank you. So, um, all right. So we have the last question here. The question is, how is the life satisfaction at ASU? Is it a difficult life? How is the social life? Any advice on coping with the pressure, or will there be any pressure at all? <laughs> Okay, um, I think I'll take this up and answer myself. So from my own person, personal experience, I would say, I mean, coming to USA has been one of my one of the best decisions so far. Uh, ASU has treated me very well. That uh, you know, this is my third semester and, and it's been a very good ride so far. Uh, I love ASU. Uh, I'm not just saying that because um, you know I have to, but uh, the people around here they make it you know really comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Um, I mean, even the teachers and the professors, they are kind, they are generous, they help you. Uh, yes, I'm not, um, you know, pose, you know uh, framing a, you know, posting a rosy picture, but uh, for me, yes, it's been a, um, it's been a good ride so far. Uh, I mean, who doesn't have pressure? I mean, there'll always be pressure, uh, especially when you're doing masters or PhD or anything. Uh, and for Indians, of course, you know, there'll always be competition. You'll be competing, you know, at the highest level here. So. Yeah, I and mean, uh, people say, I mean, you would have prepared all these sort of questions, I mean, answers for visa interview, I'm sure. I'm not going to just reiterate that. But uh, <laughs> yes, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you so much for uh, coming up with such brilliant questions. Uh, just uh, before I finish, um, I have the facts here. So we uh, have. Vishwa, uh, just to add something on that question, if you may allow me as the official administrator, coordinator, and whatsoever. <laughs> Do I, do I have a say in that? No, go ahead. No, you don't. I'll start speaking. <laughs> so yeah, just to add a bit of gyan on what Vishwa said, and uh, yes, we, we all have had a great experience. And uh, it's true that who doesn't fa face pressure? And like they say uh, in the old adage that 
diamonds are created under uh, heat and pressure. So you're going to feel the heat when you are in the Arizona sun in summer for sure. And uh, you will feel a bit of pressure and I hope you all turn out to be diamonds at the end of it. So all the best in the application. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, that, Shiva. Okay, so just, uh, I was just mentioning talking about stats. So we have a record 85 questions answered. Uh, by 192 students. Um, we had 192 students watching this video and uh, 52 different people, different students have asked questions. I mean kudos to them. I hope we answered all your queries uh, to the best of our abilities. If you still feel unanswered, please let us know. Drop in an email. Um, I hope uh, this was a good hangout session, informative session for you guys. Um, so and um, before, uh, before we wrap up the show, I would like to um, um, you bring up this quote by Tushar. Um, he said, um, uh, I would like to thank you all for such a wonderful and informative session. Looking forward to meeting you all. Um, thank you so much. We look forward to meeting you all as well. Uh, it's the same feeling here. I'm sure um, you would love it here. Uh, Supriya, if you would like to add something to it, please go ahead. Thanks to everyone for joining this hangout. Uh, yeah. So, it I guess this session was pretty useful for every one of you. We are we, even we are looking forward to meet you guys, and a lot of events lined up from ISA for you guys. And like, we are really want you welcome in a grand fashion. So and currently there is a ISA logo competition going on. So please visit our. Uh, investment Association Facebook page as well as our website. So come up with some creativity, give us a very good logo, and we will be ordered for that. So, uh, cool. Yeah, so I was just mentioning, I was just talking about events as well. Uh, yeah. So, we have a series of events planned out for you guys. There will be a welcoming session, there will be a welcoming event for you called the Icebreakers. Um, so, currently, there's a logo competition which is going on. Uh, there are a few people working on the logo. You could be uh, one of the designers, you know, of the official logo for ISA. Uh, there's a cash prize involved. There's a lot of uh, you know perks in that as well. Um, please um, like our Facebook page, um, and um, it, it's called Indian Student Association uh, at ASU. And um, yeah, so to keep yourself uh, to keep updated on all the proceedings at ASU. Uh, Thank you so much. So yeah, this is the panel. Uh, <laughs> and I, heard, uh, I, I hope you had a great session. Thank you so much for coming up with such questions. Thank you, guys. Um, have a great OSU. day. Bless you. Yo, welcome aboard, Sun Devils. Yay! Yay. Have a great time, guys. I just want to is a tech guy who didn't get a. Oh my god, you uh, should know this guy. This is the tech guy who didn't get any kind of video footage. So, yeah. The guy behind the event. Uh, just you want to look at him. Oh my god, uh, is he an A of us? No. Yeah, back in people. Hi, guys. Thank you so much. Suraj. Suraj. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. And of course, yeah, Suraj. Yeah, yeah. So, and these are the guys the guard, who made us uh, sound good, look good, and uh, they're responsible sure. for Vishwajit's makeup and everything. <laughs> Okay, guys. Waiting, waiting for, to looking forward to guys. see you guys. Go Sun Devils. Go Sun Devils. Okay, guys. Over and out. <laughs>